any word oh, any word God is an awesome God yeah, God any word oh God any word And the affirmation of faith is read as follows, read in unison. I believe in God, the maker in heaven and earth, the ruler and preserver of our lives. I believe in Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God, my Lord and my Savior. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the giver of life. I believe in the Bible, the universal church, holy baptism, and the Lord's Supper. I believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life and the world to come. The reading comes from St. Luke, chapter 17. <coughs> and it reads as follows. We're going to start at verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses that come, but woe unto them through him they come. If we were better for him that a milestone were hanging about his neck, and he was cast into the sea, that he should not offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thou brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And then, and then the apostles said unto them, Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this sacred mind tree, but thou pluck it up by the root, and thou plant it in the sea, and it shall obey you. Verse 7, but which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cows, would say unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet. I read you in St. Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. Praise God for his word. I thank God for his word. In my meditation this morning, I read the whole chapter. If you keep reading the chapter, it was talking about God had healed 10 lepers, and only one came back. So I would like to say, how many of us have answered prayers, but we have got or have not said, thank you, God. So I just want to encourage the church this morning, whatever God do for you, why don't you share it and tell somebody. As Reverend Partee said in Sunday school closes, witness to somebody. You just never know what a word of encouragement from the God, from the word of God would do for somebody. Amen. But always at the end of this, I just want to say that whenever God answered your prayer and even the unanswered prayer, tell somebody, but God. Amen. Amen. for a moment of prayer. Most gracious and eternal Father, for we truly just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you just for another opportunity yes. that you allowed us to come into the, to your house. And Lord, we can't help but to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for the angel of this house, yes. Pastor Brian. Thank you, Lord. Man, Lord God, just continue to give the man. Give the man more wisdom and give him more knowledge that he may lead we your people in the way that you would have us to go. Yes. Lord, I thank you for you just being God all by thank yourself. You, Lord. Lord, continue to watch over the entire ministerial staff that you gave to the Dean Hill Church family. Yes. Then, Lord, if it be your will, your will Lord. Lord, just your will, yes. not our will, Lord, but your will. Your will God. Look in your house and look in on your people. Yes. Lord, continue to watch over our mother boy. Lord, touch him in a mighty way. Lord, I thank you for him. Lord, I thank you for the wisdom, and I thank you for their knowledge. Lord, and I just thank you for them just being Muslims, senior Muslims. Then, Lord, if it be your will, Lord, continue to look in on my dear mother. Touch her in a mighty way. Then, Lord, if it be your will, Lord, touch her mind, Lord. Then, Lord, if it be your will, ease some of her aches and pains. Not just my mother, but all of our mothers, whether they be young or whether they be old. Lord, strengthen them where they're weak. Lord, build them up where they've been torn down. Lord, if it be your will, Lord. Lord, that's the one that's going to deliver your word today all over this land and country. And then, Lord, especially the one that's going to deliver it to us today. Lord, help us to, to realize it's not just for this moment only, Lord. It's for us to take it into our many different homes. And then, Lord, after we take it into our many different homes, take it to our many different jobs, Lord, if it be your will. Then, Lord, if, it, if it's your will, Lord, help us to just to take it in our many different communities, in our many different neighborhoods. Lord, touch us in a mighty way. Then, Lord, continue to be over the ones that are going to minister to us in music and in songs, Lord. Then, Lord, continue to watch over our musicians, our ushers. Just everyone that make up this wonderful con congregation. And then, Lord, 
start continuing to be in front of us uh, to guide us. On either side so we won't lean too far. And then especially behind us to protect us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. That a lot of us have started back to school, Lord. Lord, touch them in a mighty way. Our babies have went back to school, Lord. Lord, continue to protect us. Because, Lord, if we like most of us parents, if they're like me, Lord, I can't pack protect them when they're right there with me. Because I need you to do the protecting. Oh, I can watch over them the best that I can. But, Lord, I need you to protect them, Lord. And then, Lord, if it be your will, Lord, for later on this week, Lord, I'll be taking one of mine away from home. Lord, that haven't been away from home maybe a day or two at a time. But now she's going to be gone and doing things that's on her own. Lord, continue to protect our babies. Continue to strengthen our babies. Continue to protect their mind. And then, Lord, continue to protect their bodies. Lord, I thank you for them. Lord, I thank for you for you, God. For you just being God all by yourself. God, continue to watch over. Continue to show us what you would have us to do. And then, Lord, help us to be mindful to do what you show us to do. Lord, I thank you for you just being God. For, Lord, these and other blessings we ask in your holy name. Thank you and thank God. Amen. Jesus is on the main line. All you got to do is call him up and tell him what you want. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't know what kid is, musician musicians just kept falling in. <laughs> Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want.
go if I had to go by myself. Go by myself. I'm my mother, my father, my sister, or my brother. I go on if I had to go by myself. I'll go if I had to go by myself. If I had to sing by myself, and I sing, if I had to sing by myself, oh, my mother, my father, my sister, oh, my brother, I sing on, if I had to sing by myself. I go if I had to go by myself. Another thing, I pray if I had to pray by myself. And I pray if I had to pray by myself. My father, my sister, oh my brother, I pray on if I had to pray by myself. walk. 
I try to walk at least 20 minutes here before. Uh, 15 minutes will get your heart rate up. The other five minutes just to eat. Uh, <laughs> I try to walk every morning. But one morning I went walking, and I have problems out of my, my left knee. I have to drag it along. It just I drag it along. And, and, and one morning I went walking. I went walking that Monday morning. And my knee was hurting me so bad. But I kept walking, though. Because I regarded my knee as what? As a side issue. Because I'm walking for my heart. What we what I need to get, what I, what I'm trying to get over to you today is that we need to stop looking at so many side issues. Those side issues get our distract us from what we really supposed to be all about. And so the next morning, you know what I tried? I got up that morning and I I began walking. I start, I start saying to myself, I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life for me. All that I know that he did. You know what I began to do? I began to walk to church. trying to share with you, I found out when I walk, it's my attitude. See, the first morning, my attitude was on my, the next morning, my attitude was on my leg. And when I was walking, when my attitude was on my, and I just began to, uh, I, w- I was sounding as good as Sister Shirley was sounding this morning. I, I, to myself, see, but nobody walking but me. And I was sounding almost good as Sister Cheryl. I, I just kept saying, Lord, I don't know why. You're so good to me. I started climbing those. I got a one steep hill. And it's, it's been tough on me going up and coming down. But you know what? As long as I had my focus on my Savior, I didn't care what people were saying or what my knee was doing. Isn't that a lesson for you and I today? If we get our focus on our Savior, these side issues, they'll disappear. I thank God for you. I thank God for another chance. I thank God for another chance. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God is a gracious God. He can take an old man like me and still teach us lessons that's valuable that we can pass on. I thank God. Do we have any visitors in the house today? Any visitors? If you're if you're here today, you're not a member. You're a visitor. If you're a visitor, would you please stand? We want, we'd like to recognize you today. Amen. 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 I, we have two visitors today. Would y'all like to? I'd like uh, Reverend Reverend Lacey will be just for Reverend Lacey, and if you would ever give a person who didn't know the mic. On behalf of our pastor, on behalf of this church, Dean Hill, Missionary Baptist Church, we are glad to have you today. Members, we see where our friends are that come to pay us a visit today. We need to greet them and let them let them know how much we appreciate them being here today. Give give our visitors a hand to you also. <laughs> Along as the as the mayor chorus give and the choir and the musicians give us some music, let us stand.
God is faithful. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. God is faithful. We thank God that he is a faithful and a loving God, giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the officers that are present, to the ministers that are present, to you, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Isn't God a good God? Can we give him one more hand clap of praise today? To our visitors, we welcome you to Daniel Missionary Baptist Church and all of you, our brothers and sisters. I want to talk to you about a topic that we don't talk a whole lot about in church, and maybe we need to talk about it more. And we just said that God is faithful, but there's another group of individuals that are faithful as well. Friends. Friends are faithful. Can I get a witness today? 
Any of y'all got any friends? I'm not talking about associates or acquaintances. I'm, t- I'm not talking about folks that you get together with every now and then. I'm talking about friends. Friends, people you can depend on. I was reading. I had made up my mind yesterday that I was going to do some Bible reading. I had also made up my mind since I didn't leave town as I had planned that I was going to do some yard work and read my Bible while I did yard work at the same time. So I put on my headphones and I was going through the book of Daniel yesterday. And God drove home to me something that I had been thinking about. And that is the importance of godly friendship. So we're going to canvas, we're going to peruse just for a moment the book of Daniel today. Turn with me, if you will, to Daniel chapter number one. If you know your alphabet, I want to teach you from these letters, E-F-G. The E is for encouragement. The F is for friendship. And the G is for godliness. Encouragement, friendship, and godliness. Turn with me, if you will, to Daniel chapter number one. Do you have your Bibles today? Do you have your Bibles today? If you have your Bible, lift up your Bible and then repeat after me. This is my Bible. It is the authoritative word of God. And when I practice its precepts, I can do what it says I can do. I can be what it says I can be. I am the head and not the tail. I am the victor and not the victim. And I walk by faith. And I walk by faith. One more time and I walk by faith. And not by sight. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Stand on your feet. Let's look at Daniel chapter number one. As we honor God's word. As we honor God's word by standing. As we look at God's word. Daniel chapter number one. I want to read. We're going to skip around a bit in the book today. But I want to look with you at Daniel chapter number one. Beginning with the first verse. All the way through the seventh. In the third year, the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem, and he besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, and part of the vessels of the house of the Lord, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Now listen to this. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, certain of them, not all of them, just some of them, and of the king's seed and of the princes. Look, look, look at who he brought, verse number four. Children in whom was no blemish, but they were well favored. He went and picked out the best young people. Now, because the other went and got the best young people that were in Jerusalem after he conquered it. And look at what it says. Children of whom was no blemish, but they were well favored, and they were skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed to them a daily provision of the king's meat and of wine, which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end of their wish they might be able to stand before the king. Wanted to teach them the culture, the language, the religion, all the things associated with Babylon so that they might be able to stand in his presence. Now, among these were of the children of Judah, four boys, Daniel, Daniel, Hananiah, Meshael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah the name of Shadrach, of Meshael the name of Meshach, and of Azariah the name of Abednego. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That's enough to get us started today. I want to talk to you from the topic of encouragement, friendship, and godliness. Encouragement, friendship, and godliness. Let us pray. Precious God, our Father, Lord, we don't ask that you bless your word. But Lord, as I teach on a topic that has so much meaning to me, I pray, Lord, that you would speak through me and to your people. Lord, I don't claim to be perfect. I am way short of that. I don't claim to always get it right. God, you know I mess up every day. But Lord, help me by your spirit to communicate to your people the things that you won't communicate today. Not that I might get any glory or honor, but that you might get the glory and the honor. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all praise. And Lord, if you choose to save a soul today, then you can do that as well, for your word will not return void. Convict those that need conviction. Convince those that need convincing. Convert those that need converting. All things we ask in your name. Amen. 
ushers, you may take your rest. I, uh, by way of introduction today, I want to talk to you about a movie that was made in 1946, but it has been coming on every Christmas season since 1946. A movie by the name of It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. 1946, directed by Frank Capra, starring a man by the name of Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart plays a man by the name of George Bailey in the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And George Bailey is a man who is down on his luck, has lived his life, has tried to live right, has tried to do right. And when we get to the movie, we find that George is in some trouble because he's an accountant. And when they look at the books at his business, he's $8,000 short. Looks like he has embezzled funds. George is getting ready to go to jail. Life has failed, George. He's struggling financially. Things don't seem to be going right. In the beginning of the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, George decides to kill himself. He actually says it would be better if I had never been born. And while we see George struggling, the the scene shifts to heaven. And there's an angel there by the name of Clarence. And it is decided that Clarence needs to go back and go down to earth and talk to George and convince George that Life is worth living. And so what Clarence does is he shows George what the world would be like if George had never been born. Shows George how he saved his brother's life when his brother was about to drown. If if George hadn't have been there, his brother wouldn't be there. Showed how George sacrificed time and time again to help people. Showed that if George hadn't been there, none of those people would have been helped. Showed George his wife, what she would look like what her life would have been like if she had never met George. Show George the town that he lived in. And how if he hadn't have stood against a man that was trying to destroy the town, the town would be in poverty and would have been destroyed. All of these things he showed George, and then he wrote George this letter as George still wasn't convinced as to whether he should end his own life or not. He said, George, no man is a failure. If he has friends, no man should consider himself a failure if he has friends. As I talk to you today, I just want you to stop and contemplate this. You may have tons of followers on Facebook or on Twitter, but you don't have tons of friends. Why? Because you don't have the time to have tons of friends. A friend is somebody that you invest in. A friend is somebody that you sacrifice for. A friend is somebody that you can share information with that you may not share with anybody else. A friend is somebody that you can take something to, something that may be hurting you or burdening you or bothering you, and you know they ain't going to take it nowhere else. They just going to take it to the Lord. You know what we need today in our churches? You know what we need today in our communities? You know what we need? We don't need more religion. We don't need more rules. We need some real friends. Some friends that sacrifice for you. If you think you got tons of friends, you may not have any friends. Because a friend is somebody that you can truly share your heart with. I shared this with the ministers in the back. A friend is somebody who reminds you who you are when you're about to lose your mind. And a friend is somebody who reminds you who God is when you're about to lose your mind. As we go through the book of Daniel, many of us may have missed this when we read this book. We think that this book is about fiery furnaces. And that this book is about lion's dens. And that this book is about interpretation of dreams and great prophecies. But I want to share this with you. Before we can get to any of that, this book is about friendship. It's about four teenage boys, four teenage boys who were ripped from their homes, ripped from their community, taken to a foreign land. And the king of that land, the most powerful man in the world at that time, attempted to indoctrinate them into Babylonian society. How did he do that, Pastor Brian? As we go to the next slide, let me talk to you about the Babylonian way. What would the Babylonians do? I just read it to you in this chapter, but you may not have picked up on it. They tried to separate you from your culture, isolate you as an individual, and then indoctrinate you into their culture. In other words, they tried to brainwash you. They tried to brainwash you by giving you nice Babylonian things, by teaching you about the Babylonian religion. They wanted you to turn your back on your own gods and where you're from and what you've done. And they had conquered at that time all other nations surrounding Israel. And they would bring you in 
to prepare you to stand before their king. But you had to speak their language. You had to worship their God. You had to eat their food. You had to be like them. And then they even gave you a new name. They gave you a new name. They renamed you so that you could fit into that culture. You know what I thank God for when I read this text? I thank God that Daniel didn't get taken by himself. I thank God that Azariah didn't get taken by himself. Mishael didn't get taken by himself. Hananiah didn't get taken by themselves. But they got taken together. And when they were taken together, they were able to stick together. They were friends in the middle of that culture. And as I share with you, a friend is somebody who reminds you what your name is when somebody calling you something else. He ain't this and she ain't that. I thank God for my friends. Because my friends remind me where I come from. My friends remind me. You know what I love about a friend? No matter how high you get, a friend will bring you back down to earth. A friend reminds you of your culture. These four boys had each other. They had each other. I ask this question on this slide. Do you have any friends that remind you of both who you are and of who God is? And then I, I, I know sometimes we have quote unquote friends, but I'm talking about godly friends. I'm talking about friends that help you through a hard time. Four things I want to show you today, and then I'll take my seat. Four things I want to show you about godly friendships. The encouragement that you get, first of all, from godly friendships. Notice this. Godly friendships grow stronger under pressure. In Daniel 1, 3 through 7, these boys found the bond together because they had been ripped out of their culture. These four boys are mentioned together in this scripture. And no other names, all the hundreds, all the thousands of people that have been taken into captivity, God wants to show us these four boys the relationship that they have. You know, there, there's a reason why they have a term, fair weather friend. You know what a fair weather friend is, right? A fair weather friend is somebody that stick with you when everything going good. When everybody amen and they amen with them, but when things go bad, they ain't going to amen no more. A fair weather friend is somebody that sticks with you when the sun is shining. But how many of y'all know all of us going to have some rainy days in our lives? All of us going to have some bad days in our lives. And I don't need a friend that's looking at me standing in the rain. I need a friend that go get an umbrella and say, let me help you. Real friendship. If somebody leave you when things are going bad, they wasn't your friend no way. If somebody only hang with you when you got a job and money and status, they wasn't your friend no way. A friend ain't somebody that's looking for something from you, but a friend is somebody that wants to give to you and help you. Godly friends. Daniel and these other three boys were godly friends. Godly friends grow under pressure. Notice that when they brought them into Babylon, they tried to change the names. Daniel's name means God is judge. Mm -hmm. He changed it. The king changed it to Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. Mabel, who is a foreign god, protect his life. Hananiah means Yahweh is gracious. God is gracious. Right. Changes to Shadrach, mm -hmm. which means the command of Aku, a foreign god. Mm -hmm. Mashiel means who is what God is. Who's like God? Right. And he changed it to Meshach. Who is what Aku is, a foreign God. Azariah means whom God helps, who Yahweh helps. Changed it to Abednego, which means the servant of Nebo. You know what friends do? Once again, all these name changes were meant to cause them to forget about who God is and what God has done for them. Things going to get bad some days. And there are some days I'm not going to remember how good God has been to me. But I need a friend to show up in my life to remind me no matter how bad things get. Boy, don't you know God has blessed you? Don't you know God has taken care of you? Don't you know God has provided for you so your name ain't broke? Your name ain't beat down? Your name ain't nothing? You are a child of the living king. You are a chosen one. Friends encourage us. Friends encourage us. One writer said this, I would rather stand in the dark in a friend than in broad daylight by myself. I'd rather stand in the dark with a friend than in broad daylight all by myself. 
Daniel was brought into a bad situation, but these other three boys were with him, teenage boys, and they encouraged him. Do your friends encourage you? Do they lift you up? And when you're going through a hard time, brother, just buy your more clothes together. See, there are some people in my life that the reason why I'm close to them the way that I am is because when they went through something or I went through something, we started off as friends, but the hurt brought us closer together. The hard times brought us closer together. See, hard times can be like cement. They can bond you with somebody to where can't nothing tear you apart. And you can tell yourself, if we can walk through this together, we can walk through anything together. Real godly friendships. And, and then for those other people, I always say this all the time, God's into pruning. God is into pruning. See, some of us got a tree full of friends, but wait till the wind blow a little bit. See if some of them won't fall away. Wait until the hard times come. See if some limbs won't break off your tree. And when the wind stops blowing, the few little apples you have left on your tree, those are your real friends. I ain't, I ain't got too many. I don't have too many, but I thank God. Thank God for my friends. But not only will godly friendships grow stronger under pressure. Look at Daniel 1, 11 through 16. Godly friends, this is an important one for us in here. Godly friends share our same principles. So it's not only pressure that brings us together, it's our principles. What we believe that brings us together. Daniel 11. Then, Dan, then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel and Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah. Daniel said, prove your servants. I beseech you 10 days. In other words, look, I know you're letting people eat at the king's table. I know they're eating in, every, eating, eating in everything that the king provides to make the king happy. But what you need to do, me and my friend, just for 10 days, let us eat what our God has said we should eat. Let us follow the faith of our fathers. Let us live it out. And, and, and after 10 days, then you compare us to them. Look at what the scripture says. Prove your servants, I beseech ye, ten days. Let them give pulse, that's vegetables and fruit to eat, and water to drink. And let our countenance be looked upon before thee. Look at our faces when you're done. And the countenance of the children that eat from the king's people compares to them. And then as you see it, then deal with us. Look at verse number 14. This is the verse I want to get to. So he consented to them. Daniel wasn't the only one that felt this way. The other three, even though they aren't mentioned as speaking here, they felt this way too. They all shared the same faith. They all shared the same principle. Don't you know it's hard to be friends with somebody that don't believe what you believe? It's hard to be. And some of us are running around with folk that would tell us to do the wrong thing at the wrong time. Some of us are, some of y'all sisters hanging out with women that will tap down your husband because you say something negative about them. When they need to tell you, be quiet talking about your husband like that now. Some of us men are running around, guys, that are saying, ooh, look at her. And you know you got a wife, and they know you got a wife, and they know you have a family. They ain't your friend if they don't believe what you believe. I don't need nobody to try to make me walk crooked because the world going to try to make me walk crooked. I need somebody that's going to help me walk straight. Stop making friends with folk that don't believe what you believe. Folk that ask you to come to the club on Saturday and then go to the church on Sunday. Say, you go to the club, I'll just meet you at the church. And you go out there and wiggle and then I'll witness to you tomorrow. Your real friends, that is, if you believe what you say you believe, your real friends need to share the same principle. That's one of the ways I grade my friends. I want to know what you're really about. I want to know what you really stand for. I got an old saying, and that's simply this. If I can't trust you with my life, I can't trust you with my wife. If I can't trust you with my life, in other words, if you're trying to get me to do wrong over here, if you're trying to get me to live wrong over here, then I couldn't trust you to leave you alone with my family or leave you alone with, I need somebody that if I get sick, they'll cut my grass and not try to sneak in the house. I need somebody that if things ain't going well, they believe what I believe. 
stand on what I stand. You're right, it ain't too many like that, but they out there. You need real friends that share your principles. And if you can't believe what I believe when it comes to God, when it comes to faith, when it comes to church, then I'm sorry. You can be my acquaintance. You can be my associate. But you can't be my friend. There's an old saying, and I want to share this with you. I learned it a long time ago. Confess up. Counsel down. What you trying to say, Pastor Brown? What do you mean by confess up? Find somebody that you believe is at least as spiritual as you and hopefully more spiritual than you. And that's who you tell your problems to. Confess up. Find somebody that you believe is farther along than you. Somebody that you believe in walking with the Lord for real. And that's who you need to tell your secrets to. Don't ever tell your secrets to somebody that you know living worse than you living. So if you confess up, you need to counsel down. You need to help those people. I ain't saying throw nobody away. But what I'm saying is find some people that you can help bring up. Find some people that you can help along the way. Find somebody that you can share godly principles with. And you don't need to tell them your secrets. Tell them about your Savior. Tell them who Jesus is. So, so wait a minute. Godly friends share the same principles. But then I'm almost done already. I'm almost done. The scripture says this. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. I got another saying for you, and that's this, a rake can't sharpen an axe. Say that again, Pastor Brown, a rake can't sharpen. It says as iron sharpens iron. You need to find somebody that's an axe like you. You need to find somebody that's made out of what you made out of, that believe what you believe. Those are the people that's going to get you sharp. But you be hanging out with rakes, and you be hanging out with hammers. A hammer or a rake can't make you a sharper axe. A hammer just going to beat you down. Godly, godly, godly principles. And let me throw this one in here for free. I ain't talking about y'all being here because y'all the ones listening to me today. But everybody in church ain't right neither. All right. All right. I ain't talking about y'all. Even in the church, find you somebody that's for real. Clue number one, if you go home with them today and they like, Pastor Brian ain't right, he ain't talking about nothing, he ain't doing it, eliminate them immediately. <laughs> they ain't your friend. I say that jokingly, but I say this, be careful when you're around people that tear other people down all the time. That ain't got nothing good to say about nobody. How you gonna have a praise party when folks trying to get you to have a pray on people party or a pity party? I wanna pray, anybody else want a praise party? I wanna be around folk in my life that's lifting God up, that's saying that sister show did sing today, that brother show did pray today, and even my Rick, my little old pastor, show did preach today. I'm looking for somebody. Somebody that shares my same beliefs. My same principles. But then not only that, not only do the godly friends, godly friendship get strong under pressure, not only do godly friends share our same principles, but godly friends support us through prayer. Look at Daniel chapter number 2, verses 16 through 18. Daniel chapter number 2. Let, let me give you a background here. The king Nebuchadnezzar had, had a dream, and he wanted his magicians and his high priest to, now, 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 to, to, to interpret his dream. And see, in that culture, it was believed that only certain people had secret knowledge. Isn't it amazing how we come back to stuff like that even today? People try to teach you that they the only ones that can get in touch with God, that they got some special gift and they got some special anointing and can't nobody reach God like they can reach God, like it's some secret or some mystery to it. But the Bible says that when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I can come boldly before the throne of grace. Now you can come with me if you want to, but you ain't the only one that can get to God. But, but, but they taught this mysticism, this secret. And the king wasn't stupid. He knew that. They, they, they taught that they were the only ones that could interpret dreams, and they were the only ones. So what the king said was this, I want y'all to interpret my dream. But I ain't going to tell you what my dream is. He said, say what, king? See, if you, if you tell us what your dream is, we can get together and make some up. 
He said, oh, no, 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 no. I know y'all. I ain't going to tell you what I dreamed. You tell me what I dreamed. And then you tell me what it means. And he said, and if y'all can't tell me what I dream and tell me what it means, I'm going to kill all of y'all. <laughs> and see, Daniel and his friends, because of their knowledge, because of their wisdom, had been put in the same category as these other dudes. Uh -huh. And so their lives were on the line, too. Right. So Daniel said this, why, why are you acting? So why is the king acting so hasty? Uh -huh. Why is he trying to kill everybody? Daniel said, knowledge belongs to the Lord. And so what I need to do is I need to get with my God. And I need to see what my God says. But look at the, look at the first for me real quick. So what did Daniel do? Look at Daniel 2, 16 through 18. And Daniel went in and he desired of the king that he would give him some time. That he would show the king the interpretation. Then what did Daniel do? Daniel went to his house and went and found his friend. And he made this thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his friend, that they would go to God, the God of heaven, concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not. You know what? I, I, I thank God that I got some people in my life when I don't know how to pray, I can go to them and ask them to pray for me. That's what a friend is. A friend is somebody that ain't just going to tell you, I'll pray for you. It, isn't, isn't that the thing that we use? That's, that's the Christian pat on the back. Go on about your business. Good to see you. How will at you. Oh, I'm going through a hard time. I can't pay my bills and I'm sick and I lost my job. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Holler at you. And then we don't think about that person no more. But a real friend, a real friend, when they say I'm going to pray for you, they're going to pray for you. They're going to get that. And some of us, I, I know it's me. I'm one of them. Some of us are blessed the way we blessed because we got some real friends that are somewhere praying for us. Somebody told me this one time, and all I could do was say, hallelujah, amen. I said, I've been praying for you. They said, I know you've been praying for me because I can feel the effect of the prayer in my life. Anybody else like that? Prayer changes things. I can tell when folk been praying for me because my burdens get lighter, because my feet get happy, because joy shows up. Daniel said, look, look, we got, we got, we got a problem. We all pray with me. We all pray for me. And what's amazing to me about that is this. Daniel was the one who went before the king and said the interpretation. But he wouldn't have got there if it wasn't for his friend. He got the answer from God when they all prayed together. And Daniel was wise enough to know that there are times when you got to get your prayer group together. There are times when you got to get on the prayer line. There are times when you got to reach out to other people that you know are praying people, people that you know are your friends, and you got to say, will you pray with me? Will you pray for me? Real friends, real friends pray for you. Real friends support us through prayer. Real friends don't just play with you, I put in the notes. Real friends pray with you. I'm almost done. Last point today. Last point. And, and I think this is my, my favorite one. Godly friends not only support us through prayer, but godly friendships all stem from a person. See, the reason why people that are godly know to be the friend that they are is because they know who Jesus is. Jesus, can I get a witness? He's, he's my best friend. Can I get a witness? He's the friend that I can always lean on and always turn to. And so what we look for in this life is we look for people who act like Jesus with us. We look for people who are like him. I, 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 I've told this story many, many times, but some of the best lessons I've ever learned, I learned, I've learned from my daughter. I'm still learning from her, even to this day. And I can remember when she was just a little, little bitty girl. And it wasn't nobody but me and her in the house. And it was storming, and it was thundering, and it was lightning, and it was the day of the night. And she kept getting up out of her bed, coming in there where I was, and I was trying to get her to understand that you don't have nothing to be afraid of. It's going to be okay. So I take her by her little hand and 
lead her back to her room. Put her back in the bed and go back to my room. She'd get right back up, come back in there where I was. It's thunder and it's storm. And, and finally, I said, baby, let me explain something to you. I know you believe in God, don't you? Yes. I know you believe in Jesus, don't you? Yes, Dad, I believe in Jesus. I said, baby, don't you know Jesus is with you? Jesus is your friend. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's the one that calmed the storm. I got all preacherly with him. He's the one that calmed the storm. He spoke peace into the storm, baby, and the storm was still. I thought I had done a good job. Broke it down to it like preachers do. As I started to walk out the door, she looked at me and said, Daddy. And I said, yeah, baby. And she said, I, I know Jesus is real. But Daddy, every now and then, we need a Jesus with some skin on it. We need, in the middle of the night, when we don't know which way to turn, when we're afraid and don't know what to do, we need a Jesus with some skin on it. I turned back around, lay on the bed beside her, and held her hand and said, baby, your daddy will be your Jesus with some skin on him. I ain't going to leave you. You know what we need in this life. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God he saved me and he set me free for Minister Rogers every now and then. I need you to show up. I need a Jesus with some skin on him. A real friend is a friend because they know who he is. If you remember the story as I take my seat, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, wouldn't bow down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. And they wouldn't bow down. He said, anybody that don't bow down to me got to be thrown in the fiery furnace. And the scripture says that they wouldn't bow down. They were united in their belief. And as they captured them and took them to the fire, one of my favorite quotes in all of Scripture. They said, oh, king, we will not bow down to you. We ain't afraid to answer you in this matter. For we know that our God is able, our God is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. But they said, nevertheless, even if he, did, even if he choose not to, he's still able. He's still able. See, I might get sick one day. And I know my God is able to heal me. But if he choose to call me on home, he's still able. Don't you doubt that he's able. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But at the same time later on, Daniel, Daniel, they said, can't nobody pray for 30 days. Can't nobody pray for 30 days. Can't nobody worship any other God except you, old King Darius. And they were walking by Daniel's window. And Daniel prayed like he always did. Right. He prayed like he always did. So they took him captive. And they said, Daniel, we're going to throw you in the lion's den. We're going to throw you in the lion's den. Told the boys, we're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. Two impossible situations. They put the three boys in the fiery furnace. Heated the fire up hotter than hot. Put Daniel in the lion's den. Roll the stone on front of the lion's den. They looked over in the fire. They didn't see three boys in the fire. They saw four folk in the fire. Somebody said, who is that fourth person? They said, we don't know, but he looked like Jesus. He looked like the son of man. Daniel was in the lion's den. When they, when they got up the next morning and rolled the stone away, Daniel said, my God sent his angel. And he shut up the lion's mouth. A friend in the fire. An angel in the lion's den. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. Ain't no friend like Jesus. Won't nobody take care of you like Jesus. I thank God that Daniel and his friends had a friend by the name of Jesus. There's a friend. There's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. But maybe even better said is this. No greater love than a man could show than that he would lay down his life 
for his friends. Jesus said, you are my friends because I laid down my life for you. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise today? I want to introduce you to my friend today. If you don't have a friend, can I tell you about my friend? My friend died for me. Hung on a cross in my place. Went to a tomb where I was supposed to go to. But he got up. And it's amazing to me how he tells me, I took your place in death so that you can share life with me. Eternal life is what he offers us as our friend. If you don't know him today, I want to introduce you to my friend. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus Christ. He is our Lord and our Savior. And if you don't know him today, you need a friend. If you're going through difficult times, you need a friend. And people can be your friends if you find godly people. But the first thing you need to do is find God for yourself. If you don't if you don't know him today, will you come? Will you come? As the deacons and the ministers and wives stand. I offer you Christ today. One of my favorite songs of all time is he's the greatest friend of all. Have you heard? He's the greatest friend of all. If you don't know him today, will you come? Will you come while the blood is running warm in your veins? He don't want you to die and go to hell. He wants you to spend eternity with him. But first you got to confess with your mouth. You got to believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Is that you today? Church, can we close our eyes and bow our heads? Let's just pray for just a moment. Lord, there may be somebody here today that truly does not know you as Lord and Savior. They've looked for love in all the wrong places, looked for friendships in places you can't find it. Maybe life is hard and things are difficult. They need a friend, Jesus. They need the kind of friend that would die for them. Scarcely would a man die for a righteous man. But every now and then, perhaps, a man would die for someone who's righteous. But God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you don't know him today, he's your friend. Will you come? Will you come? Come on and give your life to Jesus. And he'll give new life to you. Will you come? If you don't know him, will you come? You need a savior. Or if you need sanctuary, if you need a church home, will you come? Maybe you've been seeking, seeking somewhere to be situated, seeking somewhere to serve, seeking somewhere to be strengthened. All we know is the word here. There's one thing that I can promise you if you're looking for a church home. If you come to this place on Sunday morning, you will get the word of God. We're not here to trick you, not here to convince you of anything, not here to sell you anything. But if your spirit aligns with ours, if your faith aligns with ours, if your belief aligns with ours, then why don't you come on? Come on and join us here at Dean Hill. I offer Christ to you, I offer church membership to you. Or maybe, maybe you just need prayer today. That's our third invitation. Let us pray for you. Let us be your friend. Let us go before God on your behalf. And you can share as little or as much information as you choose if you come to this altar. And if you come and just say, just pray for me and don't share anything at all, we still know he's able. He's able to look beyond your Lord, help me, to understand exactly what you need. He can take a Lord, have mercy and build a prayer around that. He understands you better than you understand yourself. All you got to do is come and cry out to him. Cry out to him. Will you come if you need prayer? Don't let the enemy hold you in your seat. 
Don't let anything stop you from coming. There are some people in here that will remember what you ask. And they will, will, will get down on their knees on your behalf. Will you come? Will you come? If you're looking for Christ, come on. If you're looking for a church home, come on. And if you need prayer, the invitation is one word, come. Come. And then, Lord, for those of us who are here, we live in a time, Lord, where everybody wants to be popular. I understand we all want to be loved. But I pray this prayer as much for my boys as I do for any child here. Lord, help them choose their friends wisely. Help them to understand that everybody that's trying to have a good time with you ain't really your friend. And while I pray for them, I pray for myself and I pray for us. Help us choose wisely. Help us look for people who will support us in prayer, who share our same principles, who will be with us under pressure, and who know that person, that person named Jesus. And if none come, Lord, we thank you for the truth, the power, and the holiness in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I open my eyes, I never know who's going to be here at the altar. But I thank God that all of these young people have come down today. Amen. Amen. And since all these young people have come, we're going to start with the real young people. Miss <laughs> Cora, <laughs> tell us why you came today. Some prayer for my entire family because it looks like everyone is getting sick, having some kind of problem. Amen. So pray for us to get closer and closer to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give Miss Cora a hand. Thank God for you. Miss Doris, tell us why you came today. Dr. Reverend Davis. Monday, I got to go to the hospital every week, every week. Amen. It's all in the end of this month. Amen. I got to keep it to myself. I usually call Miss Partee and Run Partee and vent in their ear. <laughs> but I had this time. Amen. Miss Brian, I spared her too. <laughs> I just want to keep it to myself. Amen. We're praying for you. And I just need to, because I don't know what the outcome. Amen. Let's give Miss Doris a hand. Miss <laughs> Doris remembers this, and I remember it as well. I have seen her curled up in the back seat of my car as we rushed to the hospital, and she was screaming and hurting in pain. You know, sometimes we take it lightly because people come down to the altar over and over again. But there's some folk in here with some real problems. Some real problems. And while some of us sit there and say, if it was me, I wouldn't go down there every Sunday. When I know in my heart, if it was you, you wouldn't even be here every Sunday. Some people have to fight their way just to get here. And so, I understand. Come every Sunday if you want to. Come down here until you get your breakthrough, until you get your answer. Keep on coming to this altar. Because the problems are real. But God is real. God is real. And he's able. We're praying for you, my sister. Tell us why you came today, young lady. My name is Ashley, and I would like for y'all to pray for me and my family through the real struggle that we are going through today. Amen. Say that again. I need y'all to pray for me and my family because we are in a very, very, very bad struggle today. Amen. We're praying for you. And what family are you from? The strong family. Amen. I thought so. We're praying for you and praying for your family. Amen. Come on, sister. Tell us why you came down today. Uh, my name is Jacinta. I just came down because I need to be a part of the church. And Amen. 
for my family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give Mr. Simpson a hand. So it's my understanding that you want to join Dean Hill today. Is yes, that what you're saying? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't that excite you a little bit? Amen. We praise God for you for coming today. We thank you for you and your family. Come, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Good to see you today. Now, you are a believer already, right? Yes. You've already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We welcome you today in Hill. Good to see you today. Thank you for coming. You, who's y'all standing with this brother? Amen. Friends. Uh, I like that. Friends. Um, coming down for prayer. Past two or three weeks. Um, saying we were supposed to be coming. But obviously, the devil has been attacking me. And uh, when I was born, my grandma spoke an anointing over me. And about maybe last year of this time, everything has just been going slowly and slowly downhill. And ever since the same year, it started, it's been going worse and worse and worse. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick. <laughs> Come on, let's give this young man a hand. <laughs> I've been fighting coming to the altar for the past two Sundays. And I was sitting there, I was just trembling in my seat and I couldn't sit no more. Amen. For the past few days, I've just been to myself. But I found out that ain't what I need to do. I need to have a friend. A friend that I can call and pray to, pray with. And that that sermon was for me, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. And I just need prayer. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. It looks like you have some friends, young man. That <laughs> that will pray with you and for you. I'm gonna come back to y'all in just one second. But tell me why you came down today, brother. Let everybody know who you are, and why you came. My name is Brother James Strong. And I'm here for prayer due to the struggle that me and my daughter, and she was talking about, uh, about two years ago, my son was killed in Denver, Colorado, by the Denver, Colorado Police Department. He was shot over 39 times in his bed, in his sleep. Ashley, go to mama. Go to her. And uh, they've been dealing with it for over two years. He's homeless, been sleeping in the car. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not scared and not ashamed to tell you. I've been struggling with my family. I got three more that I adopted before this happened. I've been struggling with this. Been going from church to church trying to get help. My own church shut us down. And I asked God, why? I've been with you my whole life. Why? Why me? But you know what he told me, Pastor? Why not you? I know what God got in store for me. I do. And I'm working towards that. And I'm going to certain churches, meeting certain people, getting certain answers from God. Right here, I have never felt so at home. I'm at home here. I feel so comfortable here. The message that you brought lifted me. I was here. I didn't want to come here this morning, Pastor. I didn't. I was going somewhere else. All right. God led me here. He led me here. Pastor, I... I belong to Gateway Church, uh, Church of God in Christ. And I'm going to be honest with you with what I've been going through. Pastor, I'm not scared. I feel that God is leading me somewhere else. That's what I feel. I, my brother's an elder there, and I talked with him. He told me to just search, just keep going. Amen. Keep praying, and that's what I'm doing, Pastor. It's something about you. This is my second time here. It's something about this church. I got to come back. I said, I'm a member of Gateway. I sing with the choir. I'm going to leave singing. I'm leave singing of the male court, and I'm on YouTube. God has been using me. I want to get back in here, but right now I'm dealing with my children, dealing with my wife that done had two major strokes 
that back there now and have a trachea on it due to this death that we're dealing with. I haven't fed my kids in two days. I'm not shucking and jiving you. I'm telling you the truth. It took a lot out of me to get up here and say what I'm saying, but I need some help back. I can't do that just pray for me. Amen. Let's give our brother a hand. couple of things. You mentioned that your previous church cut you off. I want to talk to someone from your previous church. All right. We we helped you as best we can before. And so now what I need to do for you is offer you more than just financial help. We need to go beyond that. So many times we write checks or stick stick bills in people's hands and we think that that's the answer. Obviously that is not the answer in this situation. So we need to sit with you and really try to give you some spiritual help. And then there's one thing I want to share with you. You said just then, I want to get back in church. I want to get right with God. I want to be a member. If not here somewhere, but I'm going through all this with my family. Matthew 6.33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things. You waiting for your problem to be fixed so you can get right with God. Why don't you get right with God so your problem can be fixed? Do that first and then see what God will do after that. Amen? Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Now, I want to say this to my son since he came down to the altar, and I know I already talked to him this morning. You know I'm not perfect by a long shot. I talk to you about that all the time. Yesterday, my son did something that was disappointing to me. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about how I was disappointed in my reaction to you. What you were doing was wrong. But the way I responded and reacted to you, I shouldn't have done either. So I want to tell you in front of all these people, I'm not ashamed to tell you, as your father, I love you. I will always love you. Ain't nothing you can do about that. No mistake you can make that's going to stop me from loving you and caring about you. And if I was too harsh on you yesterday, look at me. If I was too harsh on you yesterday, I apologize because I love you and I care about you and you mean the world to me. Now give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Is God a good God? Is God a good God? He is worthy to be praised. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. If there's nothing else, will you join us at the altar? We need to pray today. It always touches me when people join our church. Thank God for you, sister. Sister Jacinta, thank God for you. Can we, we're going to pray today, and then after we pray, we're going to welcome her to Dean Hill the way she needs to be welcomed. We thank God for her for being with us today. And then we're going to pray for young Mr. Peyton. Boy, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for believing in the power of prayer, even at your age. So many times people look at the problem. I never really look at the problem. I look at the position of our heart. If you humble yourself before God and crowd to God, it don't matter what you're going through. God hears and answers your prayer. So thank God for you for coming to the Strong family. I know you. I've spoken with you before. and We do ask for God to help you and ask for God to bless you and ask for God to take care of you. Is there anybody here that feels led to pray today? Miss Cora, we crying out for you. Miss Doris, we're crying out for you. My sisters. I got so many friends when it comes to our faith people that I've talked to behind the scenes and understand their struggles. I know both of y'all struggles are real, and I'm praying for you. Does anybody feel led to pray today? By the Spirit of God, anybody feel led? Come on, sister. And pray for us today. Give Sister Jones a hand for coming to pray with us today. Church family, it's praying time. You heard the request. We got sickness, help, 
family struggle, membership, the enemy tactics trying to come against uh, the mind of our senior, and the strength for family structure. It's praying time, Dean Hill. Amen. And I asked my husband just to come up here and stand by me. Amen. Amen. Pastor, if you don't mind, I just want to do a little something different this morning during prayer time, if you don't mind. Those that are requesting prayer, if you would, just come around in the front of me, if you don't Amen. mind. Amen. Those four ladies on this side, it was four men along with their friends. You all can come too as well. Run, run. And peace. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to God to prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come to you now, God, with our heads bowed down, God, with our hearts lifted up to you, God, to God, do what only you can do, God. You heard the request going forward, God. We need you like never before, God. For God, we know that in your word, you speak about being the great physician, oh God. For God, so many of us have health issues, oh God, but refuse to come down and ask for prayer, God. But God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, do your work, God, in our mind, oh God. Start from the head and move down to the feet, God work in our hearts, oh God. Clean us up, God, from the inside to the outside, God, like only you can do, oh God. God, protect our minds, oh God, for in your word in Ephesians tells us about putting the helmet of, of salvation on, God. Lord, for we need you, God, today, Lord. Touch right now, God. Lift up, bow down heads, oh God. For Father, we all need friends, God, here on earth, oh God, that we can see, for we know that you are the best friend that we can have. For truly, we can say, can't nobody do us like you, God. But every now and again, like the pastor reminds us, we need to see somebody in the flesh, God. And God, you so many times send us somebody in our way to help us along this journey, God. And we want to tell you thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God, Lord. for your word, God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. Thank you, God, for your hand of life that's on our life, oh God. Lord, I thank you for my husband, God. Too many times and so oftentimes I don't get up and pray and thank you for him in public, God. But you know my heart, God. I thank you for my husband, God. I thank you for my covering, God. Lord, I thank you for you covering us, oh God. Lord, I thank you for family, God. Lord, the young lady, the sister came up and prayed for her family, said, the struggles, God. Then the daddy on the end, God, said, struggle in the family, God. But oh God, we have struggles and strains in this yes. world. But we know that with you, God, we can make it, God. You keep on pushing us into our purpose and place that you would have us to be, God. Keep on us, position us, oh God, in a prayerful state, oh God. Lord, I thank you, oh God. Let us have a relationship, God, with you like none other, oh God. When we get our relationship with you, God, you will give us the friends that we need to have, God. And right now, we're going to thank you in advance, God. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you for your word, God. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. Thank you for being God all by yourself, God. Thank you, God, for being a God that sits high, look low, sees all, and knows all, God. We thank you this morning, oh God. And oh God, bless us the core of God. Time after time, God, she come up in here standing in the gap for family members as well as herself, God. Continue to give her strength, oh God. Continue to let her be the light for her family, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, let her draw them to you, God. Let them get closer to you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And oh God, bless Sister Doris, oh God. Touch her mind, God. Keep a mind strong, God, for we know that we're in you, God. We will get strength from you, oh God. Lord, bless the mind that no matter what the doctor reports say, oh God, the final report is in your hand, oh God. And Lord, we trust it in your name, oh God, to show yourself strong and mighty like never before, God. And we're going to tell you thank you right now in advance, God. We're not going to wait till it's over with. We're going to tell you thank you right now, oh God. Lord, I thank you. For a grown man to stand in front of his congregation and apologize to his son. Lord, I thank you. Woo, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for setting an example like that. Apologize in front of your congregation to your son. So many times we as parents, we don't get it right. We don't go back and tell them we didn't get it right. But today, God, witness it. That the pastor of this church, Dean Hill, stood before his congregation and apologized to his son. Lord, I thank you. What a nice picture, Pastor, that you're painting. Thank you. Thank you. When we don't get it right with our kids and our spouses, or even with ourselves, God, we can come to you, God, and you help us to get it right, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I 
I just thank you this morning, oh God. Thank you for obedience, oh God, unto you, God. That once again, once we get it right with you, God, you will help us get it right with what's around us, oh God. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you. Woo, Lord, I thank you for your presence, God. You're so good and you're so kind. Lord, we ask that all these requests have been made, God. Have your way, God. And when you come back and we get the report, God, we're going to tell somebody, nobody, nobody but you, God. God, you did it, Lord. Get your glory, God. For whatever you put us through, God, it's for your glory, God. Give us the strength to go through it and endure it, God. Thank you, Lord. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that I ask you, God, that when we turn around or when we walk forward back to our seats, God, to remind us that it's immediately quick, solid, and things like that can happen, God. And we just trust, believe, God, and have faith in you, God. Yes, Lord. And it is so. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Let's make sure that we welcome our newest member. I'm going to ask for the officers to come. And let's make sure that we give her the right hand of member or fellowship today. Let's make sure that we give her the right hand of fellowship today. Any other church members that want to come to welcome her, even if you didn't come to the altar, you can come at this time. Sister Jacinta Wiley has joined our church today. And we thank God for her. Thank God for you, young man. Bless you. Thank you for the prayer. praise. We do serve an awesome God. At this time, we're going to have our deacons to come, and we're going to um, give our tithes and our offerings. So deacons and whoever is going to be leading us in that, now is your time. Amen. The ministers will be standing for the missionaries. Because some, some of you um, may know some of you, a lot of times we just say missionaries doing tithes and offerings. But we, we support a group of missionaries who are from the DeSoto County area that um, moved to Uganda, and they started an orphanage in Uganda called Good Shepherd Fold. So on, on third Sundays when the ministers stand up, and when we say missionaries, that's what we're talking about, we still send them um, financial support. Well, good evening. Uh, Pastor broke it down today pretty well. Friendship, encouragement, and godliness. So uh, that's what we need to be working on, become better people and work with everybody that's around us. You know, uh, this, this is truly a good church to be in. If you want to learn the word, you come in and get good doctrine. So I'm thankful to be a part of Dean Hill. So uh, outside we have tithes and offerings, inside missionary. Uh, would, pre would you please stand? Also, uh, all auxiliary, October the 1st, you need to have your budget reports turned in. October the 1st, all auxiliary.
Father, we come with thanksgiving in our heart. Father, we just want to thank you, Father, for another blessed day, for the blessed word that has went forth, Father, and the man of God that brought the word. Father, at this time, Father, we want to thank you, Father, for this offering that's been raised. Father, not only that, the ones that gave, bless them all, Lord. Father, there are some that we only give in one day, Lord. Father, we made an offering today for the mission. I would ask you, Father, to continue on blessing the ones that we support, Father. Father, we ask you, Father, to give all the blessing up to them. Father, help them through that orphanage. Father, we just give you all the thanks right now. We want to thank you, Lord, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon. Thank you. We deeply appreciate your kind expressions of sympathy in our time of sorrow. Thank you for keeping us in your thoughts and prayers. Yours sincerely, the family of Catherine Harrell. Do we have anyone celebrating a birthday today or next week? If so, would you please stand? Do we have anyone celebrating an anniversary today or next week? If so, would you please stand and let us know how many years? We have an ice cream social once again today after service. The Krispy Kreme donut sale is still going on. Fundraiser for Women's Day. You can see Sister Dolores Cox if you'd like to purchase a certificate. The Care Home Ministry will be today at 3 p.m. at Landmark Nursing Home. We have our picture day. Again, today after service, the photo line, meal course, transportation, new members, greeters, Sunday school, usher board, children's church, youth choir, deacons, landscape committee, business staff, TAP, Vessels for Christ, and the budget committee. If you're in one of those ministries, just please stay over at the service and they will get you in the correct order. The Dean Hill Fashion Show is this upcoming Saturday, August the 26th. Fashion show rehearsal will be at 10 a.m. and the show will be from 11 to 1. There's a $5 donation at the door. All ages are invited to participate. You can see Sister Sheree Lawhorn or Sister Dorothy Jackson to sign up or for more information. The first annual Gospel Music Explosion will be Saturday, September the 16th at 7 p.m. The tickets are on sale now. You can see Sister Wanda Jones or Sister Kwana Jones to purchase. Thought for the week, faith can paralyze, but faith, excuse me, Fear can paralyze, but faith propels us to follow God. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank God for all of you, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's be mindful of all of our announcements that were made today. I have one more additional announcement, well, maybe a couple more as things come to my mind. But very, very quickly, on next Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday, we have some members of our church that have donated some things for our children. And so one of, what we're going to do on next sad, uh, Sunday very, very quickly is just have a quick raffle for our children. It's not going to cost anything. We're not charging anybody anything. But we just want to use this as an opportunity to bless some of our young people that are here. I think one of the things that, that will be given away is a new bike. And so we definitely want to make sure that we give that away as well as the other items that have been donated. So make sure you bring your children on next Sunday at the end of our service. We'll make sure that we do that very, very quickly for our children. Amen. You ought to give the Lord a hand clap of praise on that. That's a good thing. <laughs> Amen. In addition to that, I did talk to Pastor Strong on this morning, uh, Pastor Ronnie Strong, and he is coming to be with us in revival in the month of October. We'll give you additional detail on that uh, on, on next Sunday. We're still hammering out exactly what the date is. We had a, a schedule change. He was going to come the end of September, but there was some miscommunication, and he can't do that. So it will be in October. And so we want to firm it up real quick this, this week and make sure that we can give you a firm date on that. On September 5th, 6th, and 7th, I will be in revival in Hernando at a Second Baptist Church in Hernando where Pastor Quentin Taylor is the pastor. Uh, join us there. Well, it's going to be three nights of teaching and preaching. That's all I know to do. And so join us, if you will, uh, if you're so inclined. I would really love for our church to have a presence there. Uh, instead of it just being Second Baptist, I would like for it to be Second Baptist and Dean Hill and anybody else that chooses to come. 
So we invite you to be with us during that time. I think those are the only pressing things that I had today. Did I, did I omit anything, Reverend Parthi? Did you miss anything? Mr. Rogers, Mr. Benson. Mr. Benson will be at the care home, and I thank God for faithful people. And I've gone to the care home with Minister Benson several times on third Sunday. And what a great time he has there at the care home, teaching and preaching the word of God. It's a very, very quick service. It doesn't last very long. If he gives a message, it's five minutes long, sometimes maybe a little bit longer. Other people come. I've delivered the message there before, as others have. And it's just a blessed time to be able to touch people, visit with people, spend time with people. And then there have been times when we've actually gone into some of the rooms there at Landmark Care Home and visited some of the people there as well. Mr. Benson, thank you for your faithfulness. You ought to give him a hand because he does that. Ain't nobody watching. He and his family, they do that every third Sunday. Uh, and so we just thank God for them. Anything else? Let's give our newest member a hand. Isn't God good? We thank God for his faithfulness. Thank God for Sister Brian. We haven't recognized her yet today. Give Sister Brian a hand today. And we thank God for each and every one of you. Is Anything else? If there's nothing else, then let us stand. Let us dismiss. Please be mindful of all the announcements we have. Uh, children's church pictures as well as other pictures that are going to be taken today. So let's be mindful of all the different groups. I think the ushers are taking pictures today as, as well. Uh, let's be mindful of all the other groups that were listed. Let us close with a word of prayer. Precious God, our Father, Lord, they are friends that I have that always jump out at me when I read passages like the ones that I read in Daniel this past week. And I heard a minister preaching on friendship this morning as I drove into church and that, Lord, that was your confirmation to me that that was what I was supposed to teach. Lord, I don't know that I can ever give you enough honor and glory for the kind of friend that you've been to all of us, the things that you've done for us and the way that you've provided. And then, Lord, I thank you that one of the things that you have provided is faithful friends. I wept last night as I thought about the friends that you've brought into my life, like Minister Rogers, Reverend Partee, Minister Benson, Minister Smith, Minister Pruitt. They're not just ministers here, they're my friends. And Lord, I could just go on and on and name people that are my friends behind the scenes that I pour out my heart to and they pour out their heart to me. I argue with them, we discuss things, and it's always surrounded you, God. So I thank God for people like Mike Hunt and Johnny Benson and Roger Smith and Deacon Sanders. Just so many different people that I consider my friends. And then, Lord, I thank you for Dwight. I thank you for Minister Williams. There are some Sundays my heart hurts. I miss him so bad. But he's always there. He's my friend. And we can laugh and talk over the phone, I guess, just as well as we can in person. But these men have changed me. They have humbled me. They have so much to do with who I am today. And then, Jesus, if you are my greatest friend, and my wife is my second greatest friend, I thank God for the wife that you blessed me with. I watch her pray. I watch her struggle. Struggle with burdens that have to do with me. Struggle with burdens that have to do with the children. Struggle with all the different things that a wife struggles with. And I watch how she does it with such beauty and elegance and grace. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my friend. Lord, help us all to be surrounded with friends, God. People that we can trust. People that we can talk to and that we can lean on. Lord, that's, you blessed us with that. Help us to confess up and counsel down. And help us, Lord, to always confess to you. Help us to not be caught up in this time of arrogance, Lord, and boldness and all these other cliches that people throw around, just like with my son today. God, just help us to be real. Because, Lord, we spend so much time worried about what people think about us instead of worried about what the people that we love most think about us. Those are the ones that we ought to be concerned about, the ones that we ought to mend fences with and reach out to. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Bless Dean Hill Baptist Church. Thank you for our newest member. Thank you, Lord, for, amen. Thank you, for Lord, for the male chorus that sang so well today. 
Thank you for the musicians that played so well today. Thank you for the ushers and the greeters that greeted us today. Thank you for all those that are up the hill right now laboring in children's church today. Unseen and unrecognized, but they're with our babies. And we thank you for them, God. We thank you for the deacons of this church. We thank you for the ushers at this church. We thank you for the audiovisual team. I thank you for every senior citizen. And Lord, I pray a special prayer for Evelyn Benson today. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember her on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays as she goes through what she has to go through with her sickness, God. And we pray for Miss Alberta today, for Miss Jessie May today, for all of our seniors, for my mother today, and for every other senior here, Lord, we lift them up to you. And we pray for our visitors today. I pray a special prayer for the Strong family. Help them to understand, Lord, that there comes a time when they need help from you more than anybody else. That there are problems that are too big for us, but nothing's too hard for you. So help us all to be crying out for them sincerely and asking that you would make a way. Lord, we just love you today. And now, Lord, to you who are able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God said together, amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of our Lord. Have a great rest of the Sunday.